Awesome. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, welcome. Thank you all for coming. Uh, again, my name is Rob Lewis. Uh, I am here uh, because uh, I used to do a podcast here uh, with a great comedian. Her name is Michelle Buteau. Um, I used to do a, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I was a part of a podcast called Late Night Whenever, right on this stage. Um, so when it came time for us to, uh, you know, fish for places to actually debut this idea here, uh, we reached out to Den Jennifer and we were like, yo, if, if we could do it at the Green Space, it'd be awesome to do it. Uh, we know that you all have the people who would love to be a part of what it is that we're doing. You know, so uh, thank you all again for being here. Uh, we promise you a really cool show. Um, I'm here though to really introduce who is really the visionary behind Free Artist Movement. Uh, when I met this beautiful soul uh, eight years ago, uh, she, as we were getting to know each other, she had, this, uh, she had this piece of construction paper. And on the piece of construction paper, it had um, some palm trees to represent LA, uh, she's from Boston, and it had uh, a landmark, the Sitco sign, and it also had like the backdrop of New York behind it, and it said free artist movement, and artists had no vows, and movement had no vows, and um, I thought that was really cool, and uh, I started to like really just really dig her, and uh, it was in a period where we were starting to fall in love, and one of the reasons is because she had a vision, and the vision was to be able to uh, give artists a platform not only to uh, share their talent as far as their musical talent, but to also tell their stories. And we think that it is extremely important for artists uh, at whatever their level they're at, you know what I'm saying, so that we don't wait until they get to the place where they're on Fallon and they blow up and all of that or whatever, that artists are actually going through a journey consistently through the start of their career all the way up to uh, when they make it, and their stories deserve to be heard now. And so that's what Free Artist Movement was built on, and that's what you're gonna hear tonight. Uh, it's conversation, and it's a lot of badass music. So um, without further ado, this is Free Artist Movement. <laughs> Welcome to the stage, your host of Free Artist Movement and the visionary behind it, Ash Rodriguez. What's up, everybody? What's up? I'm Ash Rodriguez. Thank you, Rob. Welcome to Free Artist Movement. Wow, this is a dream come true for me. Like Rob was saying eight years ago, um, I had a dream and a vision for a space where artists could really be free. I was in a interesting place in my own artist and creative journey where I was just hungry for community. I was hungry for spaces that felt safe and transparent and vulnerable. Um, and I wasn't finding them, is the truth. And since then, in the last eight years, a lot of other incredible performance spaces have emerged as the independent artist scene has erupted. I'm sure you guys can see that the talent in the world is overflowing and people are choosing more and more to live a creative lifestyle and, and to branch out on this artist journey. Um, but what, what we were noticing and that we haven't seen enough of was a platform that was not just for performance and not just for the art, but also was really rooted and engaged in transparent, vulnerable, honest conversation about what this journey, this wild, crazy, fantastical, adventurous journey of being an artist and a creative in this society, in this economy, um, really actually feels like and what it really looks like. Um, 
to be an emerging artist, to be someone who's um, not just beginning, but has been grinding for the last five, 10, 20, 25 years. The grind never ends. Um, and so it's a, it's a dream come true to be here tonight, to cultivate a space by artists for artists. And um, I'm grateful to have you guys here tonight. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being open to this experience. Um, I'd really like to give a special thank you uh, to the green space and to the team who saw the vision that we pitched to them, was open and excited about cultivating a space like this and helping us produce a space like this. Um, but an extra, extra special thank you. I'd be remiss if I did not give a proper um, Hollywood introduction <laughs> to um, my best friend, um, a champion for artists and creatives, truly. Um, a masterful, truly masterful uh, musician um, and dreamer. Um, he is someone who, uh, the best of the best, some of your favorite artists trust him and have entrusted him with their biggest and most special live performance and concerts for the last 25 plus years. He's done it for Babyface, for Tony Braxton, Christina Aguilera, the legend, Miss Patti LaBelle, uh, New Kids on the Block, Boys to Men. I mean, the list goes on and on. But uh, not only is he excellent at his career and has the respect of, of, <laughs> of a wild industry, um, but he's my partner in crime and uh, my love in this lifetime and the next. Uh, the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> Mr. Rob Lewis. <laughs> oh <my> God. <laughs> God damn. He didn't know I was gonna do all that. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't know I was gonna um, come power packed with it. Jesus, <laughs> man, that's what's up. Thank you. Um, mm. Awesome. Uh, isn't she wonderful? Like, she's great, right? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, How you feeling, Rob? I'm feeling cool. I'm feeling. I'm yeah. feeling like this is uh, something this we've talked so about exciting. for a while. Yeah, and uh, yes. and this is uh, this is really monumental. And I'm grateful. And I'm grateful for your vision. And uh, let's get it popping. Let's get it popping. Before we kick things off, I, I have to give a shout out to. Um, Mr. Robbie Lewis on the ones and twos. Your DJ been holding it down, okay? Setting the energy for tonight. Maybe he's he's keeping the energy all night tonight. We do have some family in the house that I got a Word shout up. out. I got a <laughs> shout out just yeah. real quick. Yeah. Um, Word up. That's my boy. Yeah. That's my boy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's his my son. That's, that's my oldest. That's my oldest okay. son. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The um, mastery transcends generations. Yeah. That's what's up. What <laughs> Um, I could talk about Robbie a little bit. Um, yeah, why not? Um, uh, Robbie is my firstborn. He is my heart. Um, and, um, and to me, he's a genius. Um, and it's because he seeks out uh, knowledge. He, he wants to know more. Um, he's of the YouTube age, so uh, there is nothing that he won't learn. Um, Every time I talk to him, he's uh, learning something new, whether that's storyboarding or uh, 3D animation. He, got a, he was valedictorian, mm. um, and uh, he got a full scholarship to uh, Emerson. He studied uh, visual and media arts there. Let's go, Robbie. Um, uh, and he is also in our game, Heavy as a, uh, what we call tour rats. He's a, he's a tour rat as well. Uh, he just finished a tour with Kid Rock, and uh, this year he's going on the road all over the world uh, with Pantera. Oof. Yeah, so um, along with being a, a genius creator, he's also a DJ. Oh, let's <laughs> and go. so uh, that's why he's here tonight on the ones and twos. One more time, give it up for my son, Robbie Bush. Yeah, <laughs> that's what's up. I say we Beautiful. I say we get this popping. Let's get it started. Okay, cool, cool. Are y'all ready for some 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 good music? Some good music. That's what's up. Um, okay, cool. Uh, uh, when we 
when we talked about free artist movement and we were talking about doing this uh, at this scale, uh, we reached out to one of our brothers, one of our dear friends, um, who is in the trenches with us uh, here in New York. Um, and we knew that uh, in order to really make an impression on all of you all, uh, that we had to have somebody that was uh, exceptional and dynamite. And we asked this guy to do it, and uh, he didn't hesitate. He said, I'm there. Um, I've known this guy for uh, almost 10 years. And when I met him, I met him at this legendary club, the Village Underground. And he was playing night after night, wowing audiences there. Um, I was able to uh, use his talents. Uh, he's, he's made me look good on a few occasions. <laughs> um, uh, mm -hmm. More notably, uh, uh, playing with Tony Braxton, playing with Babyface on TV. Uh, we've, we've been able to do some really, really cool work together. Um, and it's an honor to have him here, for sure. When Nick is not crushing it in New York City, he is killing it on the road with a popular jam band called The Nth Power, whose whole mission and purpose is to be out in the world spreading love and the healing power of music. Please show some free artist movement love for yeah. our friend, the yeah. immense talent. And our brother. And our brother, Nick. Casarino! Yeah, 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 yeah. My nights out in a ballroom Liquor was the only love I'd ever known But you rescued me from reaching the bottom And brought me back being so far gone You're as soon It's Tennessee whiskey You're as sweet As strawberry wine You're as warm There's a glass of brandy And honey, I can stone All your love all the time Yeah, yeah, yeah I look for love in all the same old places Found the bottom of the bottles always dry. But when you poured your heart out, I didn't waste it long. Cause there's nothing like your love to give me high. It's Tennessee whiskey You're as sweet As strawberry wine Yes, you are You're as warm As a glass of brandy And honey, I get stoned
Tennessee whiskey, baby. You're as sweet as strawberry wine. You're as wild as a glass of brandy. Honey, I can stone. All your love, all the time, yeah, yeah. Please give it up one more time for Nick Casarino. Damn. <laughs> that's all I can say to that. Um, okay. That's like, uh, one what more time, Nick Casarino, yeah. Yes, yes. Nick, oh my God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look, it being being talented is is one thing. Um, having an in, having mastered an incredible skill is another. Um but what I love most about watching you and listening to you play is that um, it's clear that you are tapped in. You are Word tapped up. in on yeah. a whole other level um, and a whole other realm. Um, for me, it's it's a spiritual experience getting to watch you play. Yeah, in church, they uh, they call that the anointing. That's what they, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they do. They say, they say, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's one, like, in, to, to mirror what Ash is saying, it's one thing to be talented, it's another thing to be skilled, but, like, you have that thing. Mm. Like, is that, where'd that come from? Hmm. Man, I mean, for me, it's a, I mean, it's a calling, it's a purpose, it's a, it's a reason why I wake up every day, for sure, is to be able to be part of, the type of you know spiritual and service mm. um, fabric that connects you know entertainers and stuff like that. I mean, I come from a musical family. Um, my mom plays guitar and sings. My dad plays guitar and sax and keys mm. and sings, and he's yeah, a songwriter cool. too. <laughs> yep. Yo, he had a band. He had a band. Well, an idea for a band called Twist Phillips in the Galaxy. Yes. That's fucking sick, right? <laughs> Let's get it, Twist. Twist Phillips. I bet holidays at your house were popping. No, we get a popping. <laughs> we get a popping for sure. I mean, my grandmother, my mom's mom was a choir. She played for the uh, for the church, played keys in the choir, and um, her, my great grandmother, her mother played as well. Wow. I mean, so it's just like, I mean, yeah, it's just being part of, it's who we are. It's what we do. It is what it is. It's like. It's in your blood. Yeah. I mean, okay, I know where you're from, but like you gotta, t <laughs> you gotta tell everybody uh, where you're from because, like, you know, we, we'd be surprised. I'm from Vermont. <laughs> I, I'm from Vermont. There must be something in the water. Do you guys think it's funny? Do you guys think it's funny? Something in the tree. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm just kidding. There must be something in the. No, it is something in the water. It's, it's probably. It's actually probably nothing in the water. That's what makes it good. <laughs> No, Vermont's a super special place. It's amazing. Vermont's an anointed part of the country, I believe. Word up. I think mm. there's power centers around the country, like in terms of like you know certain energy centers, and there's a lot of spots in Vermont. I feel that way. Mm. I love it. I'm grateful to be from there, but at the same time, it's a it's a beautiful bubble. You know, it's mm. not. You know, I moved here in 2008 in January. And um, why? Man, I came here. I mean, I I could, I could imagine why <laughs> somebody like you in Vermont and then coming to like a metro a metropolis like New York to do more. But like, why did you 
And why New York and not Cali? I, mm. I, I'm, well, I'm East Coast all day, like to a fault. Yeah. I love Cali. I fuck with it. I still, I still would like to maybe go move there someday. But I'm too. I, I'm, I'm East Coast to whatever. But I mean, I, I came here to get my ass kicked. Mm. I came here to grow up in certain ways, at least musically. Um, How old were you? I was so. I was 21. Damn. Wow. Yeah. It was, uh, yeah, maybe 22, but yeah, something in there. And um, yeah, I mean, I came here, I was doing a bunch of heavy jazz stuff in Burlington. Um, I had just started singing again, because I wasn't always singing and playing. I like, when, when I went to high school, I started, I went heavy in, uh, heavy in on the study um, of mm. guitar, basically. So. Yeah. You're, edu you're well educated in your craft. It's clear. Hey, you know. Yes, it oozes out of you. How, how important is, Okay, because I, I, like I consider myself um, someone who appreciates the mastery of my craft. So mm. I am a, I've been playing piano since I was four, mm. and I hated it at first. <laughs> and then I started to love it around age nine uh, when I started making money. Hello. <laughs> I, started, I started playing at church, okay. and I made $10 a service. At nine, Let's go. <laughs> and then from like nine to twelve, uh, I was playing weddings and funerals, yep. right? Mm. Um, and that was just the hustle in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, but I hated practice hmm. until I started falling in love with the results of practice, right. and mm. um, and I can see that you've put in some real time in practice. Like you just can't get around the guitar like that. Um, <laughs> without knowing what you're doing, but it takes more than just like soul. It's it's like a skill, and so how important is mastering your craft to you? Yeah, I mean, it's if you're gonna, if you're going to call yourself an instrumentalist, it's paramount in my opinion. The uh, reason to do it is because um, it's, it's it's freedom, it's, it's fluency and freedom to be able mm. to think of something or you know, receive something mm. that, you, that you're gonna play and to be able to do it. Um, that's, the, that's the goal because, um, you know, in the servitude of performance or whatever, there's, there's all types of shit flying at you all the time, depending on the venue, depending on what you're playing, depending on who's there, right. blah, 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 blah. And like, it's under those circumstances that you can really tell like with what you practice or how you practice is gonna work. It's mm. like, you know, you're not in a room by yourself. You're like doing something and it's like, but yeah, the, it's, it, it's important because of fluency and it's important because of self-expression. In my opinion, I mean, it's 2023, everybody can play. Everybody's killing. Mm. Every, all these kids out there all over the world, everybody's, right. everybody's ripping. And so it's like what makes you special is like the soul shit, but also that combined with the mastery because I mean, when I was in high school, I guess I was practicing and I feel fortunate that I had this experience. I was. I was able to practice four to six to eight hours a day for years, you know what I mean? Oh. And the, I, the antidote, uh, because I wanted to be able to play anything I could think of, hmm. because I know that that opens the doors to the ancestors or to That's God or like to like anything greater than me that could, could put, you know, I could get a little sprinkle of something and be like, oh, I can do it. Thank, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. You know? That's wild to me. It sounds a lot like, I, you know, I don't play an instrument, but it sounds a lot like having to learn a, another language and your level of fluency determines what language you actually think in right. versus what comes out of you. And it, it's, it's, it's incredible to see that you, can, that you can think or receive, as you so eloquently said, and, and have it have it transmute through you and through your voice and through your guitar. That's, I'm always astounded by that ability. I mean, I guess the point at the end of the day is to not think really, is to be able to not, mm. is just to do, you know? Mm. Yeah, but there's a level of vocabulary that you have to have. You gotta study. To, you gotta yeah, study. you For have sure. to study. You gotta study. And I think that's the thing that a lot of people forget, mm. is that uh, raw talent is one thing, but um, you have to study, you know, yeah. uh, to show yourself approved is what 
the Bible says, not to hey. back there, but um, <laughs> I ain't even super religious. I just, re I just remember shit, you know, I just remember, <laughs> study to show thyself approved, right? Hello? Like, yeah, yeah. you know, to whom much is given, much is required, right? Hello. Yeah. Where, where if you want these big stages and you want these big opportunities, um, there's a lot that's required of you, of your mm. skill. Speaking of big stages, um, you tour a lot. Now, hmm. for, uh, Nick's always on the road. Like I used to be, uh, before the pandemic, uh, I was on the road more than I wanted to be for the last like, you know, 25 years. Ash as well, uh, uh, toured with some greats. Um, and, but I don't know too many people work harder than you. You're always on the road and at a level as well. Um, we can do touring, and not to sound, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> here we go. It's on it's on levels, right? You know, uh, <laughs> Ash can call and be like, "Yo, so we got a private jet with Lana, and we're going to we go. Turkey, right?" You know, saying some real cool shit. That's touring. Um, on, that's what we call touring on someone else's budget. Right, touring. Yeah. Okay. Um, but <laughs> Nick, you a road warrior. You are a road dog. The nth power and yourself. Talk about the nth power. Talk about this road warrior inside of you. And yeah, I mean, we've been grinding for years. We started in 2011. Um, amazing drummer named Nikki Glaspy, amazing bass player named Nate Edgar. Um, we've had some extra people play with us over the years, but we're a trio right now. Um, we've been grinding hard on the road for that whole time, um, driving ourselves, loading our own shit in and packing it up and driving to the next spot. What kind of venues? Um, like, you know, like between like, you know, two, two to 400 cap venues around the country. Um, as we got further into our tenure, like in 2015, 2016, more festival plays came into the thing, which is better because then you can anchor dates around it. Um, you know, when we go out for like three months at a time or whatever, it's tough. You really got to, you really got to monitor your, um, your intake and your mm. physical stuff. I'm a singer and I'm a guitar player and whatever. And it's like you can't you can't be out there all willy fucking nilly when it's like right. fucking. I'm sure it's taxing it's, on your body. Yeah. Yeah. By the time you reach the third week, and then it's like, all right, but I'm not that, the sixth week. Yeah. But like, <laughs> but like three months yeah. at a time, Oof. driving yourselves around. It's twelve weeks. Loading, the, like, the trailer of the jets. gear behind you. <laughs> Say it again. Yeah, trailer with the gear. Yep. Oof. What's the most obscure place in America you've been? Most obscure, man. <laughs> Sandpoint, Idaho is some Ooh. is kind of wild. <laughs> Idaho's beautiful, beautiful Sounds place. Sounds dusty out there. It's wild. It's it's, <laughs> it's wild. That's obscure. Um, yeah, probably Sandpoint. I don't know. Idaho. Idaho, all the way out. Beautiful country, but uh, I don't know. It definitely feels far from home. I'd say. Yeah, that's for right. sure. Right. For sure. In more ways than. Uh, you talk about Nikki and Nate. Um, I've seen you all in action. Um, we had an opportunity to work together on TV. Um, uh, Nikki used to play drums for Beyonce. Mm -hmm. The first Ooh. all girl band. First wow. all girl band. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and the end power. What um, talk about like? Because I'm just getting an understanding of it. But the jam band scene, like you all are heavy in the. Is that is that a proper way of saying it? On paper, yes. So we we were we were formed kind of like in that scene because she was coming from a band called Dumpster Funk, which is a funk band from New Orleans that was also really supported and popular in the jam band scene. But they're not like a jam band; they play like funk, real actual funk. Mm. And um, for us, we are would not call ourselves a jam band. What's the definition of a jam band? I don't want, because I don't. That's a good question. Right. That, could be a, that, could be a, that could be disrespectful. Let me not get it disrespectful. You, you, you might get me in trouble here. Mm. I don't, yeah. I don't, I, <laughs> the definition of it, the, well, so, I mean, all right, so we got Gravel Dead, we, mm. we, we got Fish. It right. kind of all stems from that. So if you like, in my opinion, if you play music that's kind of like that, um, that's like a jam band. Okay. Um, we're, we're really supported by, the incredible graciousness of the jam band scene. They're one of the, some of the most forgiving audiences in the world. <laughs> I mean that with all due respect and like I'm grateful for it. And like mm -hmm. these motherfuckers show up and um right. and they love music and right. and it supported us and that's where we are that's what we look like we are, but that would that wouldn't be the way I would classify our music necessarily as a genre. Right. 
Go ahead. I gotta tap in here because I'm, I'm seeing our our time dissipate so quickly. We could talk to you forever, uh, but I I gotta know and I and I really want to know. We we've talked about um, we've talked about mastery. We've talked about um, you know being educated and perfecting your craft and the grind of of being on the road. If 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 you were to send out a message to um, the sea of emerging artists in the world right now. We see that that scene is booming. For sure. um, but, it, but it's also rooted in, in, a, in a whole different set of values. Mm -hmm. What is something that you could give to the people, um, a bite of wisdom, if you will, about the truth um, of... Easy, light work. Of, of what it takes, yeah. you know. Yeah, nah, yeah. So I mean, I mean, yeah. First of all, stay humble, because and mm. if you, if you're not humble, then get to know John Coltrane or Bach or mm. Charlie Parker, or, you know Mozart Masters. or Miles or Ravel. Mm. You know, fuck with it. Um, stay humble, but also, you're only the only thing that matters, your only weapon, your only arrow in the fucking, what's it called, a queef? What is it? Yes. It's the arrow thing. I don't it's know. called something, whatever. <laughs> your, what? o your only weapon, your only- Bullet in the chamber. No, nah, yeah, your only <laughs> bullet in the chamber, exactly, is your conversation with, with something greater than you. Your conversation with God, your, your mm. uniqueness, you being yourself and who makes you, like what makes you what you are. Because everybody can play. Everybody can shred everybody on the table. Everybody's killing. It's 20, 2023, you know what I mean? Mm. The, thing that go, the thing to focus on, in my opinion, is your specific voice and the nuances of those stories that you have to tell or you, you, you can tell in life. What makes you, 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 you. And figure mm. out how to practice that because, mm. because that's the only thing that makes you special. That's no, beautiful. I mean. That's it. That's it right yeah. there. Damn. That's what else it. can we say? All right. <laughs> That's what's yes. up, Nick. Yes. On that note, we have to close it out with Nick Casarino. Right. I hate it. Yeah. I know Yo, I one hate more time, y'all. Nick Casarino, but please. please. Give it up. Thank I got you. <laughs> Thank you. Man. <laughs> I lost an earring, y'all. It's over. The bamboos are over. Let's keep this thing going. You guys having a good time tonight? Yes, are you enjoying this wisdom, this insight? Nick, he's so smart. I really appreciate his just perspective. Let's get it going. This next artist, rising, budding artist, beautiful young lady. Um, she is making her way out in the world, blending soca and R&B to cultivate this new and authentic sound just for her. She's here tonight to bring us some island vibes. And also that Brooklyn swagger. She's here to perform her new single called Mm-hmm, available on all streaming platforms from Brooklyn, New York. Please give it up for Mia Taylor. Try me, make your body levitate. You know my good thing you say. I cannot be replaced. Only want me, boy, it ain't a phase. I, I make up say. Yeah, yeah. Say, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Baby, come, come, come closer, yeah. Ooh, 
shit amaze me If you get to one last boy, you must come over And my body in over Hit the peak, make them reach supernova Make them say, mm -hmm, yeah Dum, 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 they say, mm -hmm, yeah, 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 yeah What's up, Mia? Yes. Hey. <laughs> I'm like, I could breathe. I got my boot on. <laughs> I'm like, yes, she made what it happened? through with the boot what and happened? all, guys. So, it's so funny. I like every time somebody sees me, they're like, oh my God, what's wrong? But real thing is, I just hurt my ankle, had to get surgery. I've been out for like a month. And like, you know, as artists, it's just like, I had to stand still. What? Mm. I didn't even know what that meant. I had to sit still. I was just like, I had so much time to like think. And just like, wow, okay. I know it. I'm Rob and I are often, <laughs> like when stuff like that happens, we look at each other and we're like, okay, the universe is telling us it's time to slow down. <laughs> Literally humbled. It took several seats. Oh, okay. <laughs> Literally. Oh I know my it. Gosh. I know it. I know it. I, I'm excited to jump right in with you because if you don't mind, I'd like to just go straight to the to the goods yes. because you and I have had some great conversations prior to tonight and, um, you know, the, the, the scene is wild right now. It's thick and budding, like Nick was saying, with talent, um, with, with artists coming from high and low. Um, globally, emerging artists are just popping up left and right. And um, women, especially, uh, singers, uh, singers who love R&B music, uh, who ha come with their own influences and their own background. Um, and I really want to know for you, um, what does authenticity look like for you in this thickly saturated scene? Um, I feel like I'm learning that right now. It mm -hmm. took me a long time. I'm still learning that actually, um, to be comfortable with myself. And I feel like it's just understanding that there are thousands of black women who sing soca, who sing R&B, who are R&B artists, who, who are talented, who can sing around me, dance around me, all that jazz or whatever, but like it's just like, but there's one you always. Mm, and I just kind of what Nick was saying, it's mm. just like being humble, like understanding like this is who you are, what is, what is the reason you're doing it? It's because you love music at the end of the day. So I feel like right now I'm learning that like being authentic is being humbled, taking several seats, spending time with yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, things are not in your control. Just continue to love on you because all those other distractions, comparison, we're, we're human. It's like, it's inevitable to not look at your friend or look at, at another person and be like, damn, damn. And it, But at the same time, it's just like, when you're too busy looking at them, you forget to look at yourself. So oh, I feel that's like right, it's right it's now I'm just like is the thief of joy. Literally. Okay. And it's and it's so cliche and it's like easier said than done. But mm -hmm. I feel like it's just important to those moments of being in t of intimidation. That's normal. That's healthy. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like, what are you lacking? So it's like being authentic mm -hmm. is picking up you know, the pieces of just like spending time with yourself. Who is Mia Taylor? And that's my my name right now, mm. cliche again. <laughs> but my dad gave me that name. I think I was like 16 years old and I was like, I'm gonna make an Instagram for me for like my artistry. I was Mama Mia at first, but I'm like, I'm gonna be a singer. Mm. And he was like, well, who are you? Mm. And I was like, I don't know. Mm. 
Mm. And so I made the name. Who's Mia Taylor? Shout out to my dad. But yes. um, right now, I feel like I'm I'm 24, and it's like I'm finally understanding who she is, and I'm loving her a lot more. And yes. I'm growing. I'm becoming a woman. Mm. I'm just internalizing the gift God has gave me, and mm. I'm just working. That's it. I'm being authentically me by putting in that time and putting in my practice and loving right. myself. <laughs> Yes. Damn, what an answer. <laughs> I clock up to that. What an answer. I don't I, I can honestly say that I, I I don't know that I was being that self reflective and or um uh understood really at twenty four that um what I needed to do before chasing the rest of it was chase me. That's something that that came with time, with age. Um, with a lot of failure, um, with a lot of frustration. And that journey for me personally didn't happen until maybe my late 20s, 27, 28, where I was really like, oh, if I keep chasing a dream without knowing who I am, I'm not really chasing anything. Um, so I, I, I applaud you at 24 to be on that journey now. That's, that's only going to put you light years ahead um, of the game. So, so how did, no, go, me. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I mean, like, I think y'all, like you said that you had to, experienced that in your late 20s but I met you I was like 20 mm. but both of you and it's like it's like you know your parents had to go through so much not saying I'm a parent so sorry God. <laughs> but like you know people yeah. people before you had to experience those things so that you can come into these rooms and say this is what she, this is what I did this is what I've been through and this is how I'm gonna help you mm. and it's like you both had to instill in us that it takes 10 years you had to humble us mm. and only those it's up to anybody who listens like you can say a thousand things and they'll go over our heads right. but it's like whoever right. internalizes like your your purpose in that moment was fulfilled yeah Aww. I for mean us. it it didn't come without a lot of mistakes though that's the right. part and mm -hmm. so what our job is to do is to be able to bear witness to uh how many mistakes you can make out here when you just think you the shit before mm -hmm. you've actually put in the time and and how to actually recognize uh, timing, that mm -hmm. everything takes its due process and its due time to accomplish. That is something that I can <laughs> definitely say at 24, I did not know. I thought at 25, I deserved to be rich. Mm. And then I thought at 30, I deserved to be rich. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and that keeps going and I ain't <laughs> rich yet. Right, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so what happens is um, you go through these things of, uh, uh, the reason why you're on this stage is because you are uh, advanced in self-awareness. Hmm. Um, that is a, a, a necessary trait that you have to have because um, uh, you have more uh, failures than you do triumphs. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so, uh, how to navigate through that. Number one, you do have to know yourself, but you also have to understand that a uh, no or a closed door uh, doesn't mean that you're not still on the way to your uh, destiny that you are creating for yourself, this path that you are creating for yourself. So I say all that to ask, um, because you know yourself so well, and because you know that um, there's a thousand uh, black women out here trying to do the same thing, um, 90 uh, or more than 90 percent of them are whack <laughs> right um, because everybody can do this thing now so not everybody wants to be educated in music like you uh, right. um, she went to Berkeley College of Music um, graduate yeah, yeah. Um, let's go well educated um, you know not everybody wants to be educated and further their 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 uh, uh, the the theoretical parts of this thing that we do. Um, hmm. But how do you apply this authenticity and this uh, difference maker uh, into your music when um, it seems that everybody has this thing that, you know, there's a thousand people going for this thing. Like, you know, how do you take self-awareness and apply it to your music? And, and, and the diff like, what are you blending and what are you making happen that's like, this is me a sound and this is what it is? Or have you figured that out yet? I'm figuring that out. I feel like, we could, we could talk about a little bit. But um, I feel like going into Berkeley, I didn't have a place. And mm. it's like, because, 
I just did soca. And a lot of my friends didn't know at the time what that was. Hmm. And I'm so like, oh, like you don't know what that is. And it's like, I didn't have, I don't, I don't have the strongest like Adele or like Aretha or like um, Whitney voice. That's not who I am. And it took me a long time to realize that. Like, you're mm. not gonna be able to sing every song, like you said, like like the great, those are, th that's their music, that's their sound, that's their lane. And it took me, again, to be humbled at school and to feel that and to go through that place of not feeling accepted as like, I, I would say it's cliche because it was very little. It was like, oh my God, nobody loves me, nobody. But it was a lot of things I had to internalize, a lot of things I had to deal with on my own. Mm. And I was like, but this is a part of who I am. And even though I realized like, okay, I don't, I'm not in a singer showcase, but I'm in a, a Caribbean group and I'm in a, and I'm, I'm in a cap show and everybody loves my song. Oh my God, your soca song is so dope. I never heard that before. And it's like, I was so busy trying to do what everybody else was doing that I didn't realize this this is your lane. This is what God is giving you. This is what you're supposed to be doing. Mm. Whether if three people know it versus 50 people, whether right. it's at the BPC or if it's on the calf show at, or on a little stage, this is what people are gravitating towards. This is who you are. So right. I feel like even right now, there's 90 million, thousands of black women in Brooklyn who want to be R&B artists. But I'm like, this is your culture. This is this is who your fam this is what your family instilled in you. Focus on what God is putting in front of you, where you came from. That's Regroup, right. come back. Stop trying to be like everybody else because that's that's where you know you fall off and you're just you start getting distracted. You start right. doing things that God didn't put in front of you now. It's like, okay, you're not listening, you're not paying mm -hmm, attention, mm -hmm. you're watching so and so, but like, what are you supposed to do? It's okay to be in your own lane. I think we forget about that. Right. Like, right. We, f we think that, oh, this song is trending, let me make a song like this. Right. And every artist's like, oh, let me make something different and better. No, make something that feels good for you. What do you enjoy? What do you like to make? What makes you want to stay up till 5 a.m. and work on a song for four months? What makes you happy? Whether that's with like 5,000 streams, because I've been there, I haven't met, I haven't been to like 500,000 streams yet, but like I know that everything I put out, I love and mm. I put time into it. That's right. So it's like at the end of the day, I'm just like, when you're on that tunnel vision, when you're on that focus, things come. I know that's right. Like they just be throwing at you, but then okay. you're just like, Whew. I was looking at Shakira, looking at Alicia. <laughs> right, right. Well, I was looking at me. Nah, I remember when I used to, uh, when I first got to LA, um, I was in the songwriting game where I thought that I was gonna make it as a hit songwriter, right? And so the game is to like, so if you submitting songs to, you know, let's just say Rihanna, right? You, you kind of say, oh, well, this is what she did on her last album, so let me, you know, or Pharrell did, or Rodney Jerkins did, mm -hmm. or such and such a did, so let me, let me emulate them to try to get songs placed. And it took years for me to realize that they're not looking for what they've done before. They're looking for the new. And so if mm -hmm. you are someone, they look in, you know, be authentic to yourself. That could very well be the new that they're looking for. And not necessarily me trying to emulate what I think has worked before. And I never made it trying to do that. You know what I'm saying? Trying to like be somebody else other than myself. It took years for me to develop what I would consider my sound and stuff like that. So that's, that's what's up that you know that. Um, before we run out of time, because I know I, I see fingers up and all of a sudden. <laughs> I, um, We're getting the wrap up signal. Let's talk about, um, let's talk about the Nike campaign. Yes. Two things I want to talk about with Mia before she go is um, the Nike campaign. And I also want to talk about social media with you. Yes. Uh, I'd rather talk about social media before the Nike campaign. Uh, okay. She had a great Nike campaign. Uh, you had a <laughs> billboard in Times Square. Yeah. Talk about that just uh, just briefly. Yes. Just, uh, okay. Exactly. So just really quick, really funny thing. I just reflected on this. Um, doing my vision board last last year, I put on my Wait, vision Wait, you board. do vision boards? I do. I do vision yes. boards every my year, girl. monthly. Mm -hmm. And I do a mood board for my social media. But we get there all the time. So um, last year, I was in the, in the process of doing a vision board. 
um, I mean this year, and I was looking back at my vision board from last year, and I realized that I put Billboard. Ooh. <laughs> but I'm at Billboard 100. <laughs> <laughs> the charts, the charts. The charts, right? Mm -hmm. But then it was just like, I was on a billboard though. But I'm like, I was like, oh shit. And my yeah. friend was like, see you have billboard on there, but see like you were on a billboard in Times Square. But I was like, girl, that's not the billboard I was talking about, but amen, like you just don't think about stuff like that. But I say this to say that just like being intentional is important, but the Nike campaign was a amazing, amazing experience. It was so surreal. Um, being up there, being a representation of my culture, of my family. Right. And like I said, believe it or not though, as much applause as I got from that, I did get a lot of backlash from, hmm. you know, people in Trinidad who didn't feel like I was worthy enough being up there, or I wasn't Caribbean enough for that campaign. Wow. So it, I, it, I'm not gonna lie and say like I'm this, a thousand percent confident person because we're human, and it's like you have your moments of being insecure, of feeling intimidation. It's healthy. That's what I tell myself. In that time, it was like, wow. It kind of broke me down in a time I'm supposed to feel right. happy. And empowered. And yeah. empowered. Yeah. And it was like, damn. Hmm. Yeah, that Just happens. And, 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 and believe it or not, that's human. Hmm. And the sad part about it is um, no man get honor in his home until um, after he blows, right? right. And so um, you're not the first or the last to have people um, hate on you because you've done something and uh, and and for whatever reason they want to tear you down or not acknowledge or you know we see it all the time on social media where um, the reason why I want to talk about social media is because I really hate social media I really do <laughs> because I think that uh, people have this thing of they see the greatness that you're doing, mm. but they don't even want to give you a free double tap to just <laughs> like say, oh, they I see it and I recognize Ooh, it. Oh, the human they psychology. Yeah, it's a psychology. They yeah, are yeah, yeah, yeah. And they know, and they know this. That's why. That's why Elon Musk made the metric that's like um, yep. on Twitter that it, it. even even if you don't even if <laughs> you don't say anything about it, I know. There's a there's a metric that says that you saw this. Yeah. So and Hello? and that's new. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. somebody that only has like 50, you know, hearts or 50 comments behind it, but 1.4 million people actually saw this. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that because a lot of people want to be shady and not tell you that they saw your Hello? great thing that you did. <laughs> Hello. You know what I'm saying? So so. Last Wait. thing I really want to say, because you got a lot of wisdom for 24. I really, really appreciate that. Yes, um, word up. I appreciate how important, mm -hmm. how, you know, to an <laughs> older guy like me, but how important <laughs> is social media to you and what you're doing? Because you do it very well. Thank yes. you. Thank you. See, and like even <laughs> stuff like that is like, I put in so much time, and my team is here too. They can tell you we put in hours for a post that'll get 100 likes. Right, right. And right. I'm just like, and honestly, I don't even feel that way anymore, but it took me a year to rebrand myself. Mm. And again, what was right in front of me, I said, hey, look, I have a mood board. I had this mood board for six months. I, I gathered, one girl I went to, um, to Berkeley with, another one I went to high school with. I said, wow. I don't know if y'all want to help me with this, but this is my vision. Mm. And now we're like three years in. Wow. And we spent an entire year building content, a marketing plan, mood board for my single mango. And now, as you can see, I'm wearing this orange and green because that's all people recognize me as is, oh my God, the mango queen. But like, just like you said, like there are so many people, I look at my engagements and, I, and I'm like, all these people are seeing what I'm posting or they're telling me like, oh, oh, you're the mango girl, but I never see this person in my life. And it's just like, but I'm getting that 100 likes and I'm, I'm spending five hours a week doing content. Right, right. But I think what people forget is about being a brand is important. As an artist, I feel like hmm. when you, it's a difference between being an artist and being a singer or like a, just a musician. It's like, damn, I got to do all that. And, and then come on social media and, and show you my life, but you don't. But it's just like, right. again, everything takes time. And even if it feels like, damn, I just did this rollout and nobody's liking it, there's always somebody watching. I know that's right. And yes. it's so important to plan. It's so important to be consistent. And fuck it, if nobody's, if nobody's liking that, 
if you got five likes and it's the same people as your auntie, your grandma, and your best friend, and right, your sister right, and her cousin, right, right. <laughs> you're going to keep putting that up. Because mm -hmm. the day they see the elevation and they see, oh, shoot, Mia, you, you make music? It's, right. it's, it's beautiful, but it's like, damn. I know you had me on social media for a minute, <laughs> and now you asking me questions. But it's like, and now you want to support. You see me on the Nike campaign, but all of that planning of like mango and like just taking time and preparing and not giving a fuck. Right. For right. real, it's just like when you're so in tune with what you're doing, who cares? It's like I spend so much time like value like just looking over my social media sometimes I, I feel you like I don't like it either like I have to actually take a break so mm -hmm. what I do like I pre-plan I post it I'm like not even on there because I'm like I'm not gonna let this consume me but don't forget about it because it's 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 the future it's here mm -hmm. it sucks mm -hmm. it's pros and cons it's powerful but right. if you're an artist do your shit put out your music but like remember you're an artist like brand yourself mm -hmm. this is this is this is your business Right. Like, so, like, at the end of the day, like, Oof. you have to do all of that. And we forget about that. We forget about branding. We forget that that still, that still exists. Like, I go out and I still hand out flyers for my shows. I still put up posters. Let's I still go. interact with people. And, like, I met two people. They came to my show one time. And, like, I got a friend. Right. I right. never, <laughs> and I'm like, shit, this man comes to all my shows. I met him in Times Square. Right. But right. none, but, like, I can't get my friends to come to my damn show, but this stranger I met on Times Square, he comes right. to every single show I have. And even if it's five people in that audience, I'm like, I met a fan right. on the street. That's right. what's up. Right. So. That's what's up. That's what's up. Damn, Mia, that's what's up. Can we up. give it up for just this wisdom that's at this young that's age what's up, yeah. and this development? Yo, uh, please, one more time for Mia Taylor. Yeah, this is not the last you'll yeah. see of her. We could talk forever, y'all. <laughs> I see the wrap up. Damn, signs that's happening awesome. Left and right. That's awesome for 24. Um, so wise. Yeah, that's the, crazy. The that's... nugget about branding is huge. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna take a slice of that for myself. No, but the self awareness is cool. Um, I want to shout out. Uh, uh, I, my daughter's here. Ooh, um, another incredible artist. Yes, um, and I have to talk about her. Um, uh, <laughs> yes, I do have time for this. Um, she's blushing. She's gonna, she's gonna blush. But uh, my 17-year-old daughter's here. She is an incredible spirit, but she's also um, an incredible dancer and composer. She's been in Alvin Ailey since the age of uh, six or seven, I believe, um, seven. And, um, and she is awesome, and she's an awesome composer. And uh, I just want to shout out uh, my daughter, Sierra. She's here. Uh, Give it up for Sierra. She came, she came through. <laughs> um, uh, she goes to college this year. Can you believe Ooh. it? Um, yes. Oh, she also goes to LaGuardia. Yeah, she's been in LaGuardia, so she's been at the fame school. So she is on her way. I uh, know it. Okay. Next. Yeah. yeah Let's keep okay. this party going. Let's go. Y'all ready to hear some more good music, right? Yes. Yeah, word up. Yes, um, yes. Who's next? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know who's next, but go. Coming up next to the stage uh, is an artist that we've had a pleasure, we've known him for years now, but really in the last couple months we've done some incredible extensive work together. He's got an amazing presence, um, a sweet spirit, um, but, re but really a regal identity. Yeah, uh, this guy is royalty. He he is <laughs> he is he is regal. He's royal. Um, uh, uh, we we met him, and he stood out amongst everyone. Uh, we've been able to build with him. Uh, we have a residency here uh, in Brooklyn, New York, uh, in New York, uh, uh, called Afrobeats Dance Party. That he is the head of. Uh, he is from the motherland. Mm. Direct. Um, direct. Yeah, and he is here to give <laughs> us some of that. Uh, grounded soul, some of yes. that grounded soul, um, all the way from from Nairobi, Kenya. Yeah, word up. Please put your hands together and show some love. We're about to lift it up in here yeah. for Eduardo Omundi. Yes, our brother. Yeah. 
How are you feeling? Feel free to get up and dance if you want to. Okay? Train the people up to you and them when them downtown. General come row, row, string up your big bad sound. Nothing ever come the road, and I'm here low road, burning like a fire. General come round. Like father, like son, a general I pass through. Give me a little space, make me dally pass. You know, make me free, free to grab up the mic and slew. Come, me still me up like a I toss too. General, you want say, yeah, general, you know. First class B, Jimmy, well, phenomenal. I may wrap up in a dance with microphone in a me, and but if I real general, still as I the only one, and it's still as I conquer in lion now. I'm from the land of King Salaman. Green me I rule over Ethiopia. Green me the living of God. They govern them more than the dwellings of Jacob and Amy. I'm so the Lord God love it, holy man Zion. From Queen Ashiba comes David Second. Go not to buy the Vatican. Tell the people up to woe. And them when them down town. General come row woe. Swing up your big bands. Nothing ever come to woe. And I'm here low woe. Burning like a fire. General come. General, come round again, come round, come round, come round. Now make me wait when me come for me crown. The city act like a Kingston town. Zion up on like a stone love sound. Trumpet low like a stone love sound. Town campus every knee bow down. Tell every king where you came, they my king Philippe the compound. Where the back up on me? I feel make a way to sit like the picnic. Zion and a table not coming with me. Every do we do a for the king glory. So everywhere we go, judge the upon the journey. And when the war time, you know it's laying ready. On the step of time, you look, you've done everything already. How suited I am, them day that they Whoa, whoa, tell the people up. And them when them down, hey. General, come row, whoa. String up your big bad sound. Nothing never come the whoa. And I'm here low, whoa. Burning like a fire. General, come, hey, never come down, never come. What? Hey, I'm a real love, yeah. Listen, hey, me and me, Bubba, like it, David and Jesse. Me and me Baba Salaman and man and like me got the bing in and me right on river stone in and me left Philistine not come in but the nothing never spread. Me ever ready cover and me never left it. Take a liar say I right when me step when me deep and then me come up in my dizzy panda. In my dizzy panda stuck on the ground then me left it good. Lord, Jano. Casarino on guitar. Hello, 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 hello. Hey, Wado. What's up, King? A star. Hello, hello. A star in the making, yes. 
Voilà. Euh, euh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, I appreciate yes, sitting next to like, like, you know, I, I do look at you like you regal royalty. Like, look at how you carry yourself. You know what I'm saying? And That's um, right. and look, let's jump right into it. Tell mm -hmm. us about, yes, tell us about Eduardo in Africa. Tell us about like mm. young Eduardo. Like you always been singing. I actually had, um, yes and no. So I started singing in the church, actually. Um, my first performance was in front of a congregation, and I sang Light of the World. It was Christmas. Mm. Um, <laughs> I still remember <laughs> the song today. <laughs> um, mm. And then sh I didn't particularly sing until I was in high school. Again, I was like 13 or 14, and then I got into um, the Turkish club. I went to a Turkish high school. Oof. Now... A Turkish International High School in Kenya, Nairobi. Sorry, just so that I get that out there. <laughs> um, wow. Yep. Uh, so basically, they said you get a free trip to Turkey, all expense paid trip, if you join the club and do certain things. Okay. <laughs> what they meant was you are going to dance or sing in Turkish music. And that was just that. Wow. Um, so what I an opportunity to travel. Exactly. Period. And that's really what I thought of. I was just like, oh, I get to, get, I get to leave. Like, How old four, were you? I was like 14. <laughs> wow. Incredible. Um, so yeah, we did that two years in a row for a month. I went to Turkey, did the whole tour thing, um, played in front of um, stadiums, packed. We Woo! had like police escorts. At 14, and stuff. you was yeah. performing in stadiums? Yes. Sir. Okay. And it was packed. Like, okay, okay, not me alone, but you know, of we course, were part of I'm groups. Just saying, but like yes, the, it was the experience of being on stage exactly. in front of 70,000 people. It was crazy. Wow. That's huge. And that really pivoted and changed everything that I was going to do. Like, everything. Of course. Just was like, whoa. When you see more, you can go after more. You can exactly. have a dream for more, a vision for more. And that was the plan. Yeah. Yes. Get out there. How did you end up in the States? Um, so and was the States the first place that you was like, um, you know, I mean, like, from <laughs> Africa, you can go anywhere in the world. Like, what, what brought you to this? It's a yeah. safe space. Um, we can talk about it. Say <laughs> less. Say absolutely less. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so four years of high school, then a year of an artist development program that I literally found out a day before and mm. auditioned for. Let, let, let's shout out the artist development program that. because that's not to be skimmed over. Yeah. Post high school, before college, you spent an entire year working on the development of your artistry. Yeah, what was this program? It was basically to figure out a like mus an artist's, um, how would I call them, the basics. Mm. How to play with a band. How to sing really with like harmonies and like you know we we would all like okay you're singing we're busy doing for you I'm singing you're busy doing like that was the move wow. around everything and you get to learn how to move around that just all of that that's the first semester second semester you just learn a bit of songwriting skills I would not call them that but sure <laughs> sure especially today um, yeah. but I would not call them that fundamental development exactly okay, and then excellent. the business aspect of like just booking a basic gig of like you need this amount of money hospitality rider. ETC, mm. um, and that was year one. I finished that, then I did a two-year development, uh, <laughs> extended diploma in wow. BTEC music at Brookhouse School in Nairobi. Now this program, I actually got a 50% scholarship to attend Let's go. through people that I'd met through that artist development program. Mm. Now what this whole program pivoted as well now was I had no idea about um, Berkeley College of Music also ex Berkeley College of Music. <laughs> alumni, um, alumni, alumni. Um, <coughs> <laughs> that being said, I had no intentions coming to the United States, if I may. Um, Please, do th tell. There was a lot of... Do tell, uh, do tell. Like, there was just a lot of... Um, I am from a black nation. I, mm. I was just understanding how much the media puts in our faces about America. And just being black in America was scary, to say the least. I'd mm. never come here. Anything I'd seen was either in the news or, like, read about. So everything was like, whoa. <laughs> wow, <laughs> right. It was just a bit right. like, you know, uh, no, uh, thank you. And <laughs> right. it was, right. yeah, um, truthfully. And when I f initially got word about applying to Berkeley, I initially applied to Ber Berkeley in Spain. Mm, the Valencia program. Yes. <laughs> okay. I went, like, I went straight to like, apply to Berkeley in Spain. And because I deferred for a semester, they told me, 
yeah, you kind of lost your spot, so you got to go to Boston. And I was like, Lord, help me. So you went, um, so, wait, wait. Uh, okay. <laughs> so you went from uh, Nairobi, Kenya it, to um, Boston, Massachusetts Boston. in January. Yeah, and <laughs> like, I landed in January. In the middle first of, time a, in the of a New England winter. <laughs> yep. Lovely, lovely. Um, but what was your arrival like? Did you have family and friends here? I had... Let's call them so, and I love to say this because I definitely believe it's for every African. Africans have extended, extended, extended family. I know, that's right. Caribbean so, like, do too, just, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> we have family, but I definitely have no idea who you are, but she's, you right. know, like, you're, yeah. you're, you're cousins family. Cousins of cousins of cousins. Exactly. Yes. Um, <laughs> Aunties. <laughs> so that was the dynamic, and that's who picked me up from the airport, and the first thing she said was, you're in America now, you're welcome to do as you please, just be safe. Mm. And I was like... Say less. Mm. Say absolutely less. Um, and yes, basically they housed me for about three months and just showed me the ropes in Boston. Um, and that's five years ago today. And it's wow. been, well, not today, but this year. Um, sure, sure. But it's, yes, again, we're learning it now. Obviously, it was nothing like I'd imagined it in all the <laughs> horrible videos and everything. Sure, sure. It was a softer landing and it was lovely. Of course, of course. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. Um, ha has this? That's an incredible statement to be picked up from the airport and and be encouraged to be free. Really, um, do you feel like? Do you feel like your five years here in America has been, has garnered a sense of freedom for you? Mm. Yeah. Yes. And how so? <laughs> um, there's a lot. If I may, even my, and yes, mother, don't kill me if you watch this. Mm. Um, I love Hi, my mom. mother, don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's also certain aspects around, you know, creativity and artistry that um, to s in around certain cultures and traditions, it's just doesn't sit, if I mm. may. Of something course. foreign, it's something new, so it's not particularly received in the best way that it could be. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Or rather just in a way that is like, oh, it's just art. <laughs> right, um, right. That being said, there was a bit of a limit. Like, there was a ceiling. Let's say this was a threshold of where I could actually get sure. um, within Nairobi. And that... Because you were... Let, let's not get it twisted here. You, you were budding in, Ken, in Kenya, yeah. in Nairobi. It, it, it wasn't like you were just an emerging artist on, on the rise. My understanding is you were entrenched we were in the industry the there. Yes, we were in the scene. I was... I started first as interning, just and through this, all of these through the first artist development program, because we mm. were outside, being forced to have concert, not forced, but it was part of the requirement of each semester. Right. Basically, all the connections made then were now, you know, fruiting now. Mm. So two years down the line, I'm able to get gigs that are actually paying me money, right. and not just you know, money. Good yeah. money, yeah. Um, and just based on the circles that you had made, but at the same time, there's only there's still yeah there's only so a much glass you can do. ceiling exactly. is like you call it a threshold, yeah. yeah. So that's the transition. And I mean, I wish I wish we had more time to talk about it, but I would love to just talk about that. You got off the plane and somebody said you could be free mm. as a black man. You know, here in America, we don't. I don't I don't land and people say that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? As a African as a black man, I'm going to say African man as a black man here in America. Um and I could talk all day and I would love to pick your brain on um uh whether or not you really do feel free. Mm. Whether or not you really do feel free. Um uh I guess for another time, though, because uh, yes. it, it before, could get, it could get before deep. we wrap up, though, before because yeah. I've been thinking about this a lot, and so just before we wrap, but up... but we do have to wrap up, and I ain't trying to like be funny about that, though. I know. But if Ricardo gives me one more <laughs> finger, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so uh, my my <laughs> acting coach back in high school used to give us these incredible prompts, and I've been thinking about this one for Eduardo because a transition from from a different country, from a different nation, from a different continent is so. Uh, uh, huge and the prompt is if I may Go and ahead. you can answer and give us the most condensed poetic answer if you may <laughs> um, but she used to say uh, when I left there to come here 
eye. And it was our job as the artists working on our scenes to be as vulnerable and transparent, as open, or as free as we wanted to be with our answers. And so I charge you to this beautiful crowd listening tonight, <laughs> when you left there to come here. When you. I left there to come here, I unlearned hmm. and evolved. Awesome. <laughs> Period. On that beautiful note. Awesome, Eduardo. Please yeah. give it up for the wisdom, the talent, the beauty yeah. of Eduardo <laughs> Omondi. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey. Okay. This next artist that is coming up to the stage, uh, we had the pleasure of working with uh, while we was producing some shows, um, again, at Berkeley College of Music. <laughs> <laughs> we can't uh, avoid the roots. And it's just a, it's just a, um, it is a melting pot of talent. It and uh, is. we yeah. spent five years as artists in residence at Berkeley College of Music producing shows. And, um, and we ran across this artist here, and uh, and she w at the time we were in the middle of the pandemic, and she sent no, we were coming out of the pandemic whenever that was, uh, and um, and she auditioned uh, via a voice memo, <laughs> and uh, and we were like, yo, who is that? And her voice quality is just so unique, so special. Uh, and uh, when we said that we were doing this uh, a year plus ago, uh, she said, please involve me if you all will have me. And here we are. And um, she's still uh, a student at Berkeley College of Music as we speak. Uh, she came up from Boston to join us uh, just to bless us. We call this segment like the diamond in the rough segment. Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody that we know that you all need to know. And. Um, and need to uh, understand that exist. Um, we would love to welcome to the stage. From Yantai, China, by way of Nova Scotia, Canada. <laughs> okay, global. Please show some free artist movement love for O Alice. I'm jealous of the rain that falls upon your skin. It's closer than my hands have been. Oh, I'm jealous of the rain. I'm jealous of the rain. Closer than the shadow. Oh, I'm jealous of the rain. I wish you the best that all this world could give. And I told you. It's hard for me to say I'm jealous of the way you're happy without me. I'm jealous. 
Please show some love. Show some love for old Alice. <laughs> Isn't her voice dope? Wow. It's just sick, right? Wow. I yeah, mean, exactly. you could hear a pen drop in here. I, I yeah. don't know about anybody else in the room, but I was verklempt. Thank you so much. Rob was incredible too. Oh my God. No, stop. <laughs> no, I, I, I love playing for singers like you. It's awesome. Thank awesome. You. Oh, thank you so absolutely. much. I love your speaking uh, voice too. It's like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have a little overtone, so yeah. Like. <laughs> we um, love. We uh, love. At home, where you're from, mm. have, have, did people tell you your voice was unique? Not really. <laughs> Um, both of my parents were kind of tone deaf, so just like, <laughs> wow, <laughs> like they were like, oh, you're kind of good at singing because you're on pitch. So it was <laughs> like, <laughs> it was always like, yeah, um, but mm, no, not really, yeah. But what about here in the states, though? Now that you're in school, mm. and and what's the general reaction? I, I mean, I know we can't be the only ones to really have fallen in love with <laughs> the unique and just authentic sound that you have. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> Um, it's different. It's coming here, I think. People tell me I have a unique tone, mm. which is like, um, that's really special to me because I was never really told that I had a special voice growing up. Mm. And then until like I came to Boston and pursuing music and learning more about myself as an artist that I got to know my voice better. Mm. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. That learning your, your journey in the years that we've worked together because we've been... Uh, close with Alice now for a couple of years. Um, what else What else inspires you outside of music 
and your own voice and your own experiences, what else are you pulling from while you're singing these? I mean, we, we, we know Alice to sing some deep and heavy records. Um, what are you reaching for? Um, so I grew up like moving around a lot and never really felt a sense of home anywhere I went. And I was always looking for home in like different places, seeing other people. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't until like I started pursuing music or any song that I found home within myself. Mm. So I really hope that like my music brings a piece of home to like those who listen, those like anyone who's like international, who's like just like, you know, growing up, like traveling a lot, being in like different country, they can like find a sense of comfort in the music. Mm. Almost like a mini therapy session. Mm, I love it, yeah. I love it. I love it, but a but an anchor, yeah. a, a really sense a sense of grounding. I believe that your voice does that. I know it does it for me. <laughs> Rob, I think your voice is sick. That's all I just <laughs> love. You know what I'm saying? Like I, he's um, always raving yeah, about I'm you. I'm just enamored by the the your um your gift, and uh and it was an honor to have you here, and we really appreciate you uh, coming from Boston, mm -hmm. taking a break from school. Mm -hmm. uh, for the day. Yeah, uh, to be with us. To just do this, you know what I'm saying? And did you all enjoy Alice and her voice? Yeah. She's yeah. special, and, uh, she's special. Yeah. And, and we uh, look forward to seeing what's next for you. And we look you. forward to seeing what's next. She's about absolutely. to graduate college, y'all. She yeah, did it. Word up, word up. She did it. She's about to be a Berklee College of Music graduate, and we're just here to continue to champion you and... You know, and work on some records. Yes, we've been talking <laughs> about working with you for a yeah. long time, so this is the beginning of of a new adventure with yeah. the three of us. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much Alice. for having me. Thank you. For Please oh, give Alice, it up. One more time, yeah. Oh, Alice! Yeah, thank you. Okay. Hey. Okay. Hey, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Robbie Lewis on the ones and twos. Yo. Yes. Those are all beats we made this morning. Hey. <laughs> no lie. That's real skill. That's, That's real talent. Real. That's real. <laughs> <laughs> um, our last uh, guest for the night, um, if you all would bear with us for another, Jennifer, what do we have? <laughs> Four minutes? Seven five. minutes. Okay. Um, uh, this next guest, it is an honor to have him here. Uh, I've known him for over 20 years. Uh, mm -hmm. When we started out, uh, uh, when I first moved to LA, um, I had just got a one bedroom apartment in Studio City and Oof. Matt came out and um, he slept on my floor and we went to the studio every day and um, we didn't have a refrigerator. <laughs> uh, we had a VCR. And Ooh, air mattresses. You're throwing it way back with the VCR. And we put our money together to get a hot dog and a large peach iced tea from across the street, the gas station across the street, the <laughs> AM, PM. Um, and, uh, and we used to go to the studio every day and write these records that we just, uh, we was just grinding together trying to do it. Uh, I've had the opportunity series. to uh, use him uh, with Christina Aguilera in her Vegas show as he sang the hit duet, Say Something with her. Uh, he's been all over the place, uh, but this year he was nominated for a Grammy um, right. for his work. Um, and and a lot of people say they're nominated for Grammys, and it's not them. It's actually a part of what they've been a part of. Uh, it was his name. It was his Grammy for right. best acapella arrangement uh, for the group King's Return. Uh, How deep is your love? It's an honor to have him here. This is my brother from uh, way back. Uh, please give it up, y'all, for Matt Cusan. Wow! I don't. I hope I can keep up with that introduction. Man. What do you mean? What? Like, like, That's come on, homie. That's like, um, <laughs> so. What's up, man? <laughs> So I gotta tell I gotta tell the the whole history of how we actually met. Mm -hmm. um, Berkeley College of Music again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I had done a demo for a young lady. Uh, her name is Jill Zade. We don't mind mentioning her name. She is dope. Um, hmm. And uh, and 
Jill, I think, came from money, right? She, she, <laughs> she, so she was able to uh, pay for like live streams and a choir on her song. And wow. um, so I produced a hell of a demo for her. Yes, you did. And, um, <laughs> and it, it went what we would call viral, right? In the mm -hmm. city of Boston, yep. right? Before viral. And, um, and Matt had heard the demo and he was like, yo, I heard you produced Jill's demo. Uh, you know, I'd love if you produce my demo. And he was like, um, uh, and then I heard him sing. And then he was like, I'm also a big Brian McKnight fan. <laughs> if you don't know who Brian McKnight is, uh, he's a hit R&B Artist. Isn't it crazy that we gotta explain who he is the, today? I mean, that's I a know, long time ago. Know. Like, you know, he's a legend. Uh, he's a legend. Yeah, <laughs> he's a long time ago. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I owe everything to Brian. To keep, yeah. be honest with you, um, I had just started my career, and I started my career touring with Brian McKnight. Brian was coming back to Boston. He told me he was just as much of a stan of, Bo of Brian's as I was. Mm -hmm. I introduced him and Brian in. B35, one of them <laughs> rooms at Berkeley. Yep. Oh my God. And Brian was so taken aback by, or like, you know, is that the right way to say it? Uh, was so impressed. Impressed by him that he flew us out to LA. Yeah. Wow. And was going to sign. And we went in the studio and worked with Brian. Yep. And, and that was like 1999, 2000. Something like that. Yeah. Forever ago. Wow. Uh, and that was my last day of school. I dropped out the day I met Brian. I was, I was done, and we flew out to his house the next day. And that was that, and that's how it happens. <laughs> <laughs> there are some things that just propel your career. Yeah. They propel you to it's jump. It's crazy. Yeah. You've, you've done so much since then. It's been wild, man. It's been wild. You've, been so, you've done so much. Um, mm. What I really had you on this show for is not just our brotherhood uh, and our history, but uh, you are a testament to never stopping. Mm. And hmm. it actually happening for you eventually. Yeah. Right. If you are, if you have that tenacity enough to keep going. Mm. And um, you've been doing this thing for a long time and it's just this year that your work has paid off for something as high and uh, such an honor as a Grammy nomination. Doesn't yeah. matter if you win or not. That's not the point. The, po the mm. point is um, the industry recognized you as um, uh, 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 as one of their own. It's crazy. That's what that means. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. There were so many times I could have given up. It's so easy to give up, um, especially in this business. As you know, the ups and downs are real. The downs are super real. And I, w I, was, I was the lowest of lows, uh, mid, late 20s. Um, the lowest of lows. Uh, addicted to stuff, uh, uh, mental home for a little while, did all the stuff. Mm. But as soon as I left, I, I, there's nothing but music. It was either music or NBA, and I'm clearly not going to be in the NBA. <laughs> so I had Yo, to and, and Mac and Hoop. Oh, right. that's my second love. And that's my hoop. second home. And he can really hoop. <laughs> so uh, I just kept going, and I put my first record out uh, when I was 28, and it immediately got picked up by Spectra Records. Um, they put me on a 30-city tour, and it was great. It was fun. And then, you know, thanks to you, like, just so everybody knows, w every Grammy interview I did, I mentioned Rob Lewis, because for real, for real, you're my favorite musician. Oh, my God. You're my favorite piano player. Mm. You and Bill Evans are my favorite Woo! piano players. <laughs> and I, I can't say enough about how much he's taught me from ages 18 to even now. Mm. Uh, so thank you. And, I'm honored. And uh, wow. so I owe a lot to you. But yeah, it, it just, it never, it never struck me to quit. You can't. What else am I going to do? So mm. I kept going, and I found the power of collaboration. Uh, and, right. and, and, and as you said, community. You wanted to build this community. Um, in my early 20s, mid-20s, but all through, I've, I've had every record deal with Atlantic, you know, McKnight and all that stuff, and none of it worked out. And uh, it, 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 you, you, if you don't keep going, wh wh what's the point? Like, I, it's just, I love music way too much in whatever capacity it is to, to stop doing it. So here we are, Grammy nominated now, and I'm sitting next to Rob Lewis. Stop. Ashley, up in New York in these beautiful stop. studios. <laughs> and stop. 
And wow. it's not over. It's still got a long way to go. Yes, sir. I know that's long right. Long way to go. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah, some might say it's just the beginning. Yes, just sir. the beginning. Yeah, yeah, it's always just the beginning, no yeah. matter if you're 18 or 50. I know it's that's It's always right. just the beginning. Yep, yep. Um, Oof. You now have a beautiful family. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, you got a two-year-old daughter, a mm -hmm. wife. Um, uh, did that change your life? One thousand percent. Yeah. Hmm. I credit my wife with saving me. Hmm. Uh, I credit my daughter with everything I am now. They, they, I live for them. Everything I do, the reason why I'm here right now is for them. Right. It's uh, every song I put out, no matter what it's about, it's for them. Hmm. Every dollar I make is obviously going to diapers and for <laughs> my wife, whatever she needs. <laughs> uh, hmm. Yeah, they, 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 they just. She she came in my life and slapped me in the face with perspective, mm. and nothing is more important to me than that. Yeah. Yo, good you, women to do that. Good mm. She's incredible. That. Yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's that. it's it's crazy how much better I feel as a musician, as a person, as a husband, as a father since they came in my life. And they're mm. they're everything to me. That's all. I, everything I do is for them. Damn, that's a song. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I could tell so many stories. Of, so many stories. Uh, of how, uh, man, we used to go to the studio. We used to sleep in the studio mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. because we didn't have a car. So we get dropped <laughs> off and then have to, have to live in the studio for like three days at a time. That taxi cab back was a lot of money. Yeah. Woo! So we'd have to yep. stay until... until uh, one of our homegirls could come pick us up on Monday morning. <laughs> oh my yeah. God. So we'd it's stay locked in the studio. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and I don't have them queued up because I ain't going to do that to you, but I still got some of those records that we did. I would do anything to hear those. Yeah. Man. We, <laughs> I got them. I got them. There were so um, many and so many different styles, and not just what we did for ourselves, but we, we had people up in there, like, and we were just producing records for them and writing yeah. stuff for them quickly. And yeah, yeah, so yeah. So many. And I got to hear those. And we, we, we honed our skills really um, mm. by, by really uh, 24 hours a day we were working on something, yeah. you know. Um, yep. and, and the results of some of that stuff is, is really cool. Um, what are you, where are you at now that you feel like, you know, a Grammy nomination, cool. What I do know is that uh, the closer you get to that plateau, the more, the harder you want to work. You have no idea. So I'm the kind of dude that is never satisfied. I almost felt pressure when I got the nomination to be like, all right, I got, I got to put out something incredible now. I got to like, I got to step it up. Right. Um, every little thing, good or bad, keeps me going. And, uh, mm. you know, it, it helps to be Grammy nominated. I got some incredible opportunities out of it. And uh, it, it's uh, what I'm doing now is, is uh, Select selective touring, you know, who, whoever, if you, you know, you call, I'm saying yes, no matter what, but <laughs> whoever, uh, we've toured with everybody and it's, and it's amazing. And I, and I admire Nick for, for doing it. It's, it's incredible. But I, now that I have the baby, especially, I love being home. So mm -hmm. over the last, I'd say, especially two, three, four years, but over the last six, seven years, I've been more, uh, producing myself and other art, a lot of other artists, uh, film music scoring. Um, I just finished a commercial today that I scored. Uh, honestly, man, if it's music, I'm saying yes to it. I don't care if it's Brian McKnight or some dude across the street that's singing. I'm let, you know, let's work. Let's make music. Uh, everybody used to tell me in my 20s, don't say yes to everything. And you'd have to be selective, but I've been saying yes to everything. And I, I'm constantly working. I'm I constantly, right. <laughs> I might make $200 for this, this track, but mm. You know, I just made uh, uh, a track for, I won't say how much money, and it just hit on an um, album in um, Spain for the Spain Idol winner. Wow. Uh, so it's just like, I've been just going, man. And, and, That's and, awesome. And music is music, you know? We, yeah. we all want to be rich, too, still, yeah. but music yeah. is music, and we're making yeah. it, and I could have said no to King's Return when they, when they Instagram messaged me and said, hey, can you do an arrangement for us? And thank God I said yes, because... You know, I got that nomination. I have to ask, like, and and before we, you know, close it up, but <laughs> what does it mean to you to, after all these years um, of 
hard work, of diligence, of discipline to not just be recognized by the industry, but to be in a position where, um, from my understanding, um, something that you love the most and have always been exceptionally good at, something like arranging mm -hmm. vocals, mm. Um, to be celebrated for something that you love and have spent the time mastering. What does that mean to you in this stage in your career? It is a validation that I didn't know I needed. And I don't know if needing is the right word, but man, it felt good that mm. day. There, there were, I was with my father who, who, when I found out I got nominated, who, again, you know, like Rob, my parents obviously supported me since day one. Right. They never said, you need to make some money and get a job, you know, at mm -hmm. 25 or whatever. Uh, and my dad said, you know, that, makes it, that basically makes you like in the NBA of music because <laughs> I'm a big <laughs> basketball fan. So he was like, you're kind of, you, you might be on the bench still, but, <laughs> but you're in the NBA now. For it's, sure. It's, it's, uh, it's surreal. Uh, there's no words. It's, it's, it's uh, to have that attached to my name for the rest of my life is, Absolutely. is nuts. I remember, and I know Rob, I think we talked about this too. You might have done the same thing. When I was a kid, Take Six's first record hmm. came out. And I was only like five or six when it came out, and I had two tape recorders, Dog, and I would listen to that's each. That's the way to do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. You would record on one, and you'd sing the top part, yep. Yep. yep, and then I'd listen and listen and listen, and then I'd press play on this one and record on this one, so I got the two parts, <laughs> and you'd go all the way till it's six, and it's so <laughs> unlistenable because of the tape recording at that point. Is and you find out you're wrong about some <laughs> of the like harmonies. most <laughs> notes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, wow, I can't go down to those yeah, bass notes, and yeah, I can't really, yeah, but uh, yeah. it's been, yeah. Arranging over the past few years, I've had the, the in honor of arranging some tunes for the New York Pops at Carnegie Hall Dope. for the Boston Pops, and it's weird how it came around to arranging because that's what I started since Take Six, since uh, you know listening to John Williams and Morricone and Bill Evans. Like arranging has always been a part of me, Amazing. and so it's incredible to it, it. Still doesn't seem real. I'm still I'm giddy. You just when you ask me that question, I got giddy again. Yes, I'm like, Wait, what? Yes. I'm nominated for what? Well so deserved. Crazy. Last well thing deserved. I'm gonna say. Uh, uh, we have a mutual friend here in the audience. Um, uh, his name is Rick Ryan Holson. Um, <laughs> My guy. Yeah, and um, I'll never forget um, one of the most monumental moments in my life was um, my mom had just died, mm -hmm. and I had been planning this big Rob Lewis and his orchestra mm -hmm. show here in New York, and... Um, and it had a 17-piece orchestra, and it was a whole thing. I was gonna like tell my stories and and have a orchestra play, you know, this whole thing. And um, and I remember not knowing that Rick was coming, um, but Rick showed up, and when he showed up, he showed up with you. Yeah, man, I wouldn't have missed that. Wow. And um, and that day. Uh, Rick was like, "Yo, this was awesome, man. I got somebody I want you to meet." And um, he was like, yo, you got to come by VH1 tomorrow. And at the mm -hmm. time, Rick was the director of this show called Big Morning Buzz Live on VH1. He was like, you got to come tomorrow. You got to come tomorrow. And, um, and I went the next day, and I met uh, one of our other partners, Shane Farley, mm -hmm. who's an uh, Emmy Award winning uh, television producer. Genius. And, um, and I ended up getting on VH1 every day yeah, in Times Square yeah, man. Uh, because of Rick. Yeah. And uh, and when I couldn't do it because I was on the road, <laughs> the one person we called <laughs> fill in on TV on camera was Matt Cusack. Man, and That's I appreciate right. it more yeah. than you know. Yeah. That was a fun, yeah. Yeah. fun That's gig. Right. Man. Thank yeah. you That's so right. much, bro. Yeah. Thank you, Rick. Yeah. So thank that, you, Rick. That was fun. Man. Rick yeah. right now is the uh, mm -hmm. director of the Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. So uh, he's bad. in the house. Him yes. and his lovely wife, Michelle. Yes, uh, shout out another incredible artist and creative. Uh, yes. uh, Matt, we, we can't have you just talk like this and not do a song. So we got to do a song <laughs> with Matt. All right. uh, are y'all ready to hear a song from Matt? Let's get it. Yes, Let's please show some love for Matt Cusan. A hand for Robin Ash too. They, they, you guys did perfect, man. You guys are perfect, and all the other artists. This has been a special night, man. This is, this is what music is. What we were just talking about. It's community. It's beauty.
going crazy, I ain't gonna lie anymore. What you're feeling, there's a reason for. I wanna be. Matt Q sign, you all. As a final treat, as a final treat, you all. Um, uh, first of all, I, I, I want to say uh, thank you all for your patience. I know we're running over with time. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you, staff. Thank you, Green Space. Um, but uh, as a final goodbye and a final thing. Um, we will do one more song. Um, uh, we're gonna have Nick Casarino back one more time, you all. Give it up for Nick. He's been killing it all night. And, um, and uh, this lady here has toured all over the world as a uh, vocalist and a dancer uh, for legends like uh, Lana Del Rey in front of hundreds of thousands of people, uh, John Legend, Robin Thicke, uh, Nick Jonas, Demi Lovato, uh, the list goes on and on. She has a career in music. And uh, what kind of show would we have uh, that we did not have her sing? So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Nick Casarino and Ash Rodriguez sing in Paris in June.
to go He pulled from me like Moses from the stone Please, please, please let it last A penny for your thoughts and a rose for your past Every word that comes from you Still be sweet if it was fun with you. Every day was Paris and June. Every day is Paris and June. Every day is Paris and June. Thank you all so much for coming out tonight. This is Free Artist Movement. We hope you had an incredible time tonight. I would love to give an extra special thank you to the whole team at The Green Space. Thank you so much for believing in the vision, for helping us produce an incredible night. Thank you to The Green Space. Again, I would like to shout out all the artists on the stage tonight. One more time for Nick Casarino, Matt Cuson, Eduardo Omundi, Taylor and oh Alice and the man, the myth, the legend, the maestro, twinkling in the ivories all night long, Mr. Rob Lewis. Your DJ for the night, Robbie Lewis. Thank you guys so much. I'm your host, Ash Rodriguez. We'll see you again soon. I hope you had an incredible time tonight. This is Free Artist Movement. Have a good night, y'all. Thank you. Thank you.